indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Biondi? Here. Brantley? Here. Gebhard? Here. Time? Here. Slaughter? Here. All present. Right now, our council liaison and or our alternate are not in attendance. Okay. So the next item would be the adoption of the agenda. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, let's see, we need the next item, 5A, approval of the meeting minutes. Uh, do you have a copy of the meeting minutes from February 7th? They were included in your packet. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. And next, the approval of the minutes from February 25th or 21st. That was our special meeting minutes. They were included in your packet. Can I have a motion to approve those meeting minutes? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And lastly, item 5C, workshop meeting minutes. Can I have a motion to approve those minutes? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Next is citizens input time. Any matters concerning the CRA? If there are any members of the public who wish to speak? Seeing none. We'll move on. Public input is now closed. Uh, we have no we have no items on the consent agenda, so we'll move on to unfinished business. A follow-up status of 1231 Lafayette Street, the continuation from the February 7th CRA regular meeting. Now turn the floor over to staff. Um, before we begin, Chair, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, are we looking on item 8 and 9, 8A and B, are we looking to take any specific action on that today? And then secondly, the same with 9A through D. So in other words, are each of these items not only standalone, but will we be taking action? And if so, what action is staff looking for? Not sure until staff oh, okay. makes their presentation. All right, thank you. Good afternoon. Hi, Dawn. How are you? Dawn Andrews with the Real Estate Property Management Division. Um, we were directed to get an appraisal on the property, which recently came in late last week. I can forward it to everybody for copies. I don't, they didn't deliver them, and so I have a rough copy here with me. Um, the market value of the property came in at $340,000 should the board wish to sell the property. That would be, you would list higher, and then um, that should be around the purchase price that somebody would be willing to pay for it. Um, the appraisal does include some rental information. The appraiser came up with $16. Now, this is for the front. So if, as you know, there is an office area that's 1,275 square feet. Within the rear, there's 825 square feet that currently the city RA is using as a storage area for some of their facilities. Um, should the board wish to rent the property out, the market value, according to the appraiser, he came up with about $16 per square foot, which comes out about $1,700 per square foot per month. I'm not, per month. $1,700 a month 
uh, plus utilities, um, the, and, and plus sales tax on that. So those were the base numbers there. There is a desire, there is some need for some internal staffing to possibly have the city staff people could rent out the property. You have the storage facility in the rear, which if we have to end up renting something, that wouldn't make sense to give up that garage area from an internal staff position. I can stand by for questions. Any questions? <coughs> we'll start with Greg. Um, yeah, so is that, um, if we were just to go ahead and sell it right now as is, or would we have to make um, any repairs beforehand? There are some repairs that have been completed and the report takes into, con uh, into consideration the repairs that were being completed. I believe that the roof, roof has not been completed, right? Sure. So I have facilities is going to come forward with what's remaining. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Riga Chacone, I work in property management. So the roof uh, was under contract to be replaced. However, uh, with the hurricane, they were only able to uh, complete the shingle portion up front. We still have some uh, insulation work to complete before we put the actual membrane done, and that's where the status is of the roof. So that's what remains. But everything else is operational. Rigo, okay. can, can you just um, kind of go through the amount, what, what you've put into the building, what we've done? Sure. Sure. So uh, we gave it a nice, pretty light facelift. It was all CMU block. We put some stucco on it and painted the exterior. The most important part that I feel was the actual uh, ADA compliance up front because it has a very narrow opening. So and it was just a nice little four inch step. So we've actually put a little a small ramp with rails to accommodate uh, and to fix the ADA issues that were there. And then, of course, uh, for the last two years, thereabouts, we uh, used to be open space and the like, so we've actually put some uh, interior walls in there, uh, a little break room, uh, bathroom fixtures, and the like. And do you recall the total amount of those, of all that work, the, if you, including in, the roof that's left? In total, it's about 160000 I thought in our retreat, I think it was our retreat, correct me if I'm wrong, we had discussed about that the city felt that we would use some of that for um, supplies and that we were going to rent out the other part of it possibly to an organization that was interested in purchasing it and then see if some other place because of the parking issue that might be around that area might be interested in eventually purchasing. But I about that conversation we had at the retreat. Yeah, specifically, I, I recall us discussing that Rotary had expressed a potential interest mm -hmm. because they were losing their storage facility space and that they might be interested in renting maybe the front half for storage. And there was talk about maybe partitioning it and, and the city continuing to use the back portion for storage and renting to Rotary the front for storage. Is that, or has there been any more discussions about that? <clears throat> Damon Grant, for the record. Yes, that was the last discussion. We even talked about what would be needed to separate those two different storage areas, and, and that's still a viable option for the use uh, of that facility. So that's on the board, and what we didn't have at the time uh, of the last meeting was the appraisal value that you had uh, mentioned. Um, I, I think we did bring up the the renovations at the last meeting as well, but where we left off was uh, the potentially the rotary having the upfront storage space and then uh, the city slash CRA maintaining or retaining the back storage half of the building, the 825 square feet in the rear of the building. Has rotary, I'm sorry, has rotary, has anybody contacted or? I, they did not contact my office. I don't know if Ms. Bud I happened to be in Arthur Printing yesterday and spoke with Bob Welsh, not Bobby Welsh, Bob Welsh, 
Um, and I don't think the Rotary is uh, interested in renting this space. Um, they truly want to purchase the building. They would be happy to rent us a space. So I think when you look at it that way and you think about that, it would put the building on the tax rolls and we'd get tax money from that, A, and we would still have a space to store whatever it is that we store there now. So I think that's something we need to think about and perhaps <coughs> talk to them more about. I don't know what they're interested in purchasing it for, so. Our staff, Maureen, had reached out to the Rotary and they confirmed exactly that. Their, <coughs> their interests are in um, a fee simple, basically transfer of the property of purchase outright. Um, they're not interested in being a tenant. So I think the only other issue there is whoever we sell it to has to understand we only have, what, two, three parking spaces? There's not much parking there at all. There is that little parking area from uh, the building next to it. You know, if you're facing the building this way, there's a parking lot there. I don't know what's there, I forget. Yeah. Is DEC wanting us to take action and give direction on this today? <coughs> As to what direction we should go today? Yeah, so we had a discussion about this at the last meeting. There was uh, direction from the board at that time to to look at um, contacting the Rotary because there was an interest in possibly some type of use. Uh, we have done that. They said they would be interested in purchasing. Um, st staff both on the city side as well as the CRA staff uh, prior to Helen leaving um, had identified that basically the CRA needs places to store its stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it be benches, trash cans, banners, decorations. Um, so if, if you were, you know, we're looking for basically, do you want to retain the building? Uh, we, we put in 160,000 into it. It's appraised at 340. So essentially you're, you'd be getting 180,000 out. If you, if you take that, that um, just to do some quick math here, if you take that 1700 for lease, for that same amount of space. It's like 105 payments. Uh, can we just sell outright to Rotary or does it have to be advertised and made available to the public and, and that, that kind of thing? I believe you guys follow the city's procurement. So I, I believe it could go on the MLS. Um, there's like eight, eight different um, types, to types of, 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 or ways to go ahead and, and sell it. Um, I would just not take, you know, one, I mean, but just as a legal advice, just, just get it out there. It could only be up for 30 days or, I mean, just have some, some uh, wide. So I have a question. How much would we, if we kept the back as is, what would be the fair rental price or can we negotiate something where we don't have to pay for that if we sell it to somebody, whatever, whoever is interested in purchasing? How much would the rent be for that 125 square foot, I guess is what I'm asking for storage. For the, for the 825 square feet yeah. for the garage area? Yeah. I think there was a figure in the, in the appraisal. I don't recall what it was offhand. And would it be better off for us just to rent a storage unit at that point too? If it's gonna cost us half, you know, half of 1700, we can rent a storage unit for a couple a more lot bucks less. a month. Yeah, but it wouldn't be right there. I think we can at least initially pursue that as part of the purchase agreement. It, they have to agree for a period of time to provide us either low cost or no cost availability for that back half as a, as a condition of whoever's gonna purchase it. And so, um, after that, then it'd be after whatever date that we decide and or staff negotiate, um, after that it becomes fair market and we can put in the contract that says fair market rent after that and then at that point the city can, or the CRA can make a decision to go find a storage unit if we need, but I think there's nothing wrong with conditioning uh, someone's 
interest in the building on their making that space available to the CRA for a number of years at no cost. So I would like to make a motion that we approve sale of the uh, Lafayette Street property at a price to be established uh, by staff, um, conditioning the sale on the CRA having free access for storage to the back half of that 825 square foot for as long a period as can be negotiated um, and thereafter uh, continue to rent at our option at fair market value. Um, I, I think that's our, our, our best move right now. Dawn, how much, have you figured out how much that rent would be? I mean, it's not like it's an office space. It's no, a storage it, it, space, so it shouldn't be $17. No, and I was, I was, I remember a discussion with the appraiser about it that he was supposed to come up with a figure. Uh, of course, it's not jumping out at me right, right away um, for the garage area, but it would be at a reduced rate because even, even at 50% of the 17 because it, it's unfinished garage area. It is air conditioned, but it's so not finished. So even if it's $8 a square, square foot, foot times how many squares? 800? 825. What is that? 600 and four, is that 600 or is it six? Is, yeah, it would be 6,600 a year or about 550. So if we sold the building and asked for two years rent free, I think that's fair. But we're not negotiating here. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that's what I was going to say because I, I do not dis disagree with Mr. Brantley, but if somebody else wants to go ahead and actually utilize the entire building and pay the premium amount for the building, right. do you want to kill a deal no. because of that? So I, 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 I think staff obviously will bring every type offer to you because you've got to make the, the determination. But by conditioning a sale on that right now yeah, could I actually wouldn't. hinder the sale. I uh, agree. But during negotiations, that's what, what you're trying to say, I believe, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, is that staff should negotiate the sale with a, a two-year, three-year, five-year, whatever, it, may be free rent for the back 825 feet. Sounds Don't want to condition the sale on it, but we, we want to try to negotiate that. And that 825 square foot right now is being used for like our guy that does the maintenance in South Cape and to keep materials and stuff and the lights and everything right now, right? So if there's not any, to my knowledge, any other storage units per se available in South Cape, we don't want to have to have him drive to an industrial park for a storage unit. I, 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 that was kind of my thought. It was I, I recall from the discussion that that is, is almost essential to us in terms of his convenience and that there wasn't a whole lot of alternatives. So I didn't want to give that up and put us in a position of, of having to go rent someplace. If, if we have this amount of material, and we obviously do, where, where we've got to store it for events. Um, I, I don't, Maureen's in Tallahassee and so she has the history of this, but I'm getting the sense that this item, there isn't a predetermined board directive here. It was just informational requests that you all asked to see what <coughs> options are out there. Um, yeah, that's why I, I mean, if you want us to take action, then I, I had the motion. I'm willing to modify my motion to say, leave that kind of thing up to staff to negotiate with buyers but if you're not looking for direction and a motion from us today to move that forward on the make a decision on the property then I, I'm fine with withdrawing my motion I, I would respectfully request that you do at this point and here's why we haven't discussed the budget um, All right. I have the intent of making some points during our budget discussion about um, hiring a firm to, to provide a project manager for all of the project management uh, all the projects that we um, have on the books and um, I would like to propose we continue 
to move forward with infrastructure improvements in the CRA, which would be project oriented. Uh, so that person, I'm not recommending that it be a, a staff member of, of the CRA, but um, someone that we hire that does project management, uh, they'll need a space. We have the employee that's doing the maintenance that needs space. Uh, we have yet to refill the admin, um, which I think is appropriate for that person to be back down in the CRA and have a presence. Um, and we have the storage situation. Um, I had thought that the board was already moving towards selling this, but now I understand that it doesn't appear that you are all set in that. And I think we would be foreclosing on um, several opportunities that I think are going to be important over the next couple of years if we do offload that. Um, I'm sorry that I'm coming in on the back end, but I just want to let you know the vision, and this is preceding kind of the budget discussion, so I just thought you might want to hear a little bit of that before um, you make any motion. I have one more question. So do we know if everything in the storage is CREs currently, and when they did the appraisal, are there photos to show us what's in there? D Damon, are you still here? I mean, you, or are Damon there city can... other city items in there? Like, do we know? I, I don't know that anybody's went through and done a full inventory, but that storage area contains. Um, it's not just signs and posters. This is everything that's necessary for when we uh, close up uh, Cape Coral Parkway, Lafayette. We do major events down there: banners, uh, poles, pole brackets electrical devices. Um, so I, I would say 99%. I'm not saying if you went through everything, you wouldn't find something owned by maybe the city or a ladder or something, but uh, the majority of everything that's in that storage space is owned by the CRA. Okay. All right, my question then is understanding if we're gonna hire a project manager and we need a staff person um, an administrative person and we want that presence in the CRA we should just keep the building and use the storage and perhaps we could rent storage to somebody else not necessarily the rotary but we would have a building my question then is how much extra is it going to cost us to continue to repair that building a fair question, Rigo or Damon? I, I don't have an f actual figure, however. Well, off the, you know, like ballpark. I, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't <laughs> expect more than 20,000 somewhere just because there is some damage associated by FEMA recoverable or should be recoverable. So it would be small. I mean, it's a functioning building. Okay. And then would the parking be sufficient for the staff that would staff that building? Yes, it would be the three, three individuals. And one more question. Has there, you discussed that the roof was never, because of the storm, able to be completed. Is that money, did we expend that money out of a budget to do that already? It, it's budgeted. Okay. We have a PO. We've uh, paid out a portion of it. The rest, um, yes. Yes. I mean, okay, Damien, you did answer my question about what was kind of in the storage, but it sounds like, is that CRA stuff or is that more special event stuff to close down the roads or are they somehow connected? Because it sounds more like special events uses it than CRA. I don't know. I think, you, so I think you're talking about the, the steel bollards that, are, that go on 47th. Those. Right, these are items in, in our mind and the way we... Um, Kind of quantify these would be CRA items. So like, the, so like the lights that were broken for the hurricane and mm -hmm. stuff like that. These are CRA purchased items or necessary ancillary um, equipment that needs to be there to put on CRA funded events. So can we get pictures of what's in there or for the appraisal or whatever too? So we just know. See if it's on the computer, okay. but I don't have it with me. Because I, I've got mixed emotions. One hand says keep it, use it. The other hand's like rent it, use it for storage. I just want to make sure that we do the right thing. Because eventually I think that's going to be a really 
prime piece of property if it isn't already even yeah. though the parking issue just throwing in my two cents like if we parking do decide not to sell it it might be better to have activity there and, and people going in and out rather than mm -hmm. just having a storage unit too so i agree because there's already some issues there with homeless people we we saw, saw that in the last couple of days so anybody else do we know what we're doing or are we just kind of putting this on hold till next meeting? No, but I, I will say, uh, so I'm gonna have staff go through the building, get an inventory of what's in there. If there is city assets in there, I will make sure that there's an appropriate agreement so that it's okay. understanding the relationship of the two entities. And if you do ha end up switching, being torn to getting rid of it, then, then we will adjust our plan to find a space to, to lease and rent. So I, the intent of my discussion wasn't to steer you in any there. It was just to say, I thought some of that had already been made and this was just providing the options to, but I, I, I realized as you all were talking that that wasn't already predetermined. Do we have a consensus up here as to who would rather sell, as to who would rather keep it? I don't even know if I have a consensus with myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I, my mind has been changed since we started talking. I think initially, I, my thought is it's an older building. It's, you know, we're just we're sell it. Sell it. <laughs> but, but if we're going to have staff be there, if we're going to need office space, mm -hmm. if we're going to continue to need the store, going to cost us something and, and we own this one now so my, my mind has been pushed in the other direction um, yeah i'm kind of in agreement if there's a use for it which was i think the very first question we had was back to the city is beyond the cra does the city have a use because certainly we've identified how the cra is using it but if it's not a pressing issue where we need to make a decision to sell or keep, well, it sounds like we're deferring that longer decision until we have a better idea of what we're doing and what our needs are. And I think even staff has piped in kind of that wait and see mentality, at least through a one more budget year, I would think that we can defer it. If we're going to have staff there and we're going to have storage there, then perhaps it's not a bad idea to have a sign that it's the community redevelopment agency there and people will know where to come rather than to have to come up here to discuss that business. I, you know, that's just my opinion. I was all in favor of selling it a minute ago, but now I think I'm the other way. <laughs> so on the overhead, that's, that's the picture from the, um, from the appraisal itself. I can provide a copy of it, and I, I apologize for not getting it over to the city clerk's office, um, the appraisal report, and she then can forward it to each board member so you can have a copy of the report. Looks like boxes of banners and can't really I can tell bring it around them. too if you want me to approach. Yeah. Yeah. So would somebody like to make a motion to put this on to, why don't we continue this till after our budget discussions if somebody would make that motion then we could move on i'll make that motion second do we need a roll call for that or all in favor voice poll would work mm -hmm. a voice poll would work okay all in favor aye aye, aye. any opposed okay motion carries Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you, Dawn. No, 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 just after the budget so we can hear what the plan is for the Okay. Next item, item eight is unfinished business, CRA special event sponsorship application approval update. Um, somebody from staff is going to Have we all looked over the application? Is
is staff going to update us on this? I don't know who brought this in. I know at the last uh, meeting, I think Shelly was here and you guys approved the, from what I could read, approved the $5,000 for that particular event. However, they were gonna use it for closing the roads, but they're not using it for that now. They would like to use it and apply that money to their uh, off-duty uh, police detail. Right, so, so what happened with this item was the board had approved specifically $5,000 mm -hmm. per event up to $20,000 and it was for a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. um, the group had to actually go out and um, prepay for the road closure. And so it, it wasn't basically a reimbursable cost that had been authorized. So they had asked, hey, this is still underneath our amount. Can we just use it for a different expense? So all we're doing is bringing this back to you for authorization that the, the allowable um, use of this fund be a little bit broader, knowing what it was actually used for versus what was authorized. But they had to make the payment first. Right. So that's why they're just asking to use the same amount of funding just for a different different uh, category of expense. Basically, the, the motion would be um, to, to approve the pre-approved <laughs> allocation <laughs> of, of $5,000 for the closure, closure of the road to be used for police services. Essentially, we're substituting one entity that could have been approved for another entity that wasn't thought of because we... It's the same entity so that requested it. It's right. just the money's being used... A different pocket. Going mm -hmm. to a yeah. different entity, right. Um, with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request to essentially move the amount from the special event sponsorship that was originally earmarked for acne road closure to the i think they referred to it as the police services I'll second it. please call the roll biondi aye brantley aye gebhard aye time aye slaughter aye five eyes motion carried <coughs> Okay, item number nine, new business, the parking management plan. Where the, no budget. Uh, I think we got oh, the I budget. I forgot the budget, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to forget the budget. <laughs> item number nine, budget and funding priorities. Ooh. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Nicole Reitler, I'm the budget administrator for the city. I'm gonna be walking you guys through your fiscal 2024 operating budget today. Um, first, we are going to start off by walking through your proposed numbers. We'll take a look at 22 and 23, as well as what we proposed for 24 through 28. We'll also walk through the status of all of your CRA projects for both public works and CIP and follow up with all of the usage for the remaining budget funds and open it for discussion. As you can see, um, we've prepared a financial statement for you that shows your revised budget for fiscal year 2022, as well as your actuals. And we've also dropped in your fiscal 2023 um, revised budget, as well as your 24 through 28. Staff worked with um, staff within the CRA to evaluate prior year trends as well as needs for the upcoming year. Um, they walked through each of the existing projects as well as needs that would be um, needed for within the CRA. And we've put together a 2024 budget that we think is best for you. Um, as you can see at the bottom, there's $1.2 million still left and that's part of the bigger discussion towards the end. Within that budget, your 
revenues have been estimated with a 3% increase um, for tax increment revenue each year. Your personnel currently includes two positions, an administrative position as well as a maintenance position, both of which are budgeted at midpoint. Your operating budget includes CRA donation programs of 105,000, which includes $60,000 set aside for three bike nights, as well as $500,000 in economic development incentives. This is a decrease from the prior year, but there are plans for those funds. Um, within your transfers out, it includes 1.1 million for the recovery of the loan from the general fund, as well as 416,000 to LCEC for debt service and 460,000 for the streetscape debt service. Lastly, it results in 1.2 million to discuss for future projects. Based on prior year budgets, we brought together um, a list of all of your existing capital projects so you could see the project actuals to date as well as any outstanding budget dollars or cash available. We're gonna walk through each one of those projects and the statuses so you can understand where the CRA stands. For Public Works, they're currently maintaining the median landscaping on Palm Tree Boulevard. Originally, you had 800,000 budgeted. It's currently in the final stages of the procurement process for a consultant preparing the access management plans, and it's gonna be followed up with landscaping design plans once they're finalized. The median landscaping on Del Prado Boulevard and Waikiki Ave. Um, currently, this project is being maintained in-house, and the budget of $80,000 is being worked on. Two of those medians have already been curbed. Your sidewalks on the south side of Miramar Street from Coronado Parkway to Cape Coral Street. Last year, we put in a budget of $413,000. Currently, we are waiting on CDBG environmental clearance to start the project, but CDBG is also going to be assisting with the funding on this, and we will be utilizing any CDBG funds before using the CRA project funds. CDBG is? Community Development Block Grant. No problem. Your traffic signals. I know last year there was a lot of discussion on whether to wrap those traffic signals or paint them. I know it was decided to move forward with painting black, I believe, um, but currently we are still gathering information on the process and pulling those street um, traffic signals out to be painted um, and developing that scope of work. The Lafayette Vincennes additional parking, this project is being maintained in-house. 10 additional parking spots are currently under design and there is a budget of 50,000 that they expect to spend. The CIP department is managing your Lafayette streetlights. The budget was about 400,000 and that has substantially been complete. They are also managing your Founders Park. You had originally budgeted 250,000 and added an additional 50,000 for artwork last year. Unfortunately, the scope of the project came in higher than expected and you had decided to put the project on hold going forward. Lastly, our 47th Terrace Streetscape, over the years you have budgeted additional funds to complete additional sections of that streetscape. Um, as the project has wound up and now been completed, we do have a remaining cash balance of $3.1 million. Um, after we have gotten together and met, the suggestion for those funds is to cover the cost of decorative streetlights down on Cape Parkway of $160,000. We also would like to finish finalizing the remainder of the expenditures of $33,000 within the project. Utilize a portion of those funds to allocate to existing projects to hire a project management firm to come in and manage all of our CRA capital projects. And then any additional funds we would like to allocate into land acquisition. From your operating budget, you do have $1.2 million available to allocate out. 
we are suggesting that you repurpose 267,000. That is the budget available um, in cash from the Founders Park project, less the design that had already been done, um, as well as appropriate an additional $50,000 to resurface Big John's parking lot. And then we would like to take the remainder of the cash and put it towards the south parking lot in Vincennes. I do have public works here if you have any question regarding on the status of any projects and I'm open to any questions. Before you do that, can I just kind of give an executive summary? Um, thank you very much. Okay. Um, so what I would envision for the CRA um, moving forward is that we focus on um, capital improvement projects, uh, infrastructure projects. And so you'll see a, a lot of what we have in here is basically resurfacing the, the Big John's parking lot, uh, f finding a way to accomplish that with the Founders Park that was parked. So just instead of improving that park, let's improve the existing uh, parking lot that we have. Um, hiring the project management firm to accomplish all of the work that um, we see that was budgeted last year, plus that project and any additional projects that we have. Um, it was originally planned that city staff would perform that work. I can tell you, um, and this is not an exaggeration, because of Hurricane Ian, that plan is no longer viable. The facilities management staff, their project management workload has just tripled. And so if we want any type of, me of meaningful progress on this vision that we've de you all developed last year and where we're gonna go the next couple of years, um, having money in the budget to hire a project management firm to focus solely on what we want to accomplish is gonna be our best, best course of action. Um, in addition to that, <coughs> the $500,000 for economic development uh, incentives, we're gonna have a kind of a presentation on th those what I alluded to at the previous meeting, uh, how we're going to <coughs> utilize funds to uh, provide grants to the, the private sector to, to continue to build infrastructure that, frankly, for the last 10 years looks as it did 10 years ago. And I don't think we want to be there as we approach the next 10 years. So we need to find a way to bridge that gap with these smaller businesses <coughs> to, to continue to build out the CRA in the South Cape to a vision that that we all want it to be. Um, so that's just kind of a, a global overview. I wanted to kind of set the stage before you ask any questions. Uh, the meat and potatoes are in here, but that's kind of the, the thought process. And then as we roll back to the previous discussion um, with the maintenance staff that we have there, with um, when we closed down the previous CRA office, we did so because the city council became the board and so it made sense to move all the staff back to City Hall. We have now kind of reverted back to a board of uh, representatives made up of down in the CRA. And I think it is appropriate then that we have the staff as well down there. So um, right now with having the CRA staff member in the city manager's office and the board down there and then the maintenance person down there, and then ultimately this project manager, I don't think it's appropriate for the admin to just sit up in the city manager's office when they could be down there providing um, more than just admin work to the entire South Cape. So that's why I put forward the, the thought process earlier on, there'll be a staff, what I see of at least three out of that office plus the storage. Um, we've already put 160,000 into it. So we're gonna get 180 out if we sold it at fair market value. And then we have to rent somewhere else and, and lease somewhere else. So the, the return on investment really is, we did a facade grant for the building is, is essentially what would have would have happened. It would have looked better. I think there's a will be an appropriate time to do that. I just don't know if it's right now based on uh, where I think we should go. Questions? I've got several that came to mind during the presentation. First is, <clears throat> with regard to our anticipated revenue, are we, are we anticipating any reduction in property values rolling out in the next couple of years uh, in the wake of the hurricane? Are we going to see the property appraiser's office cut property values, and as a result, is that gonna have an impact on our TIF funding? Uh, should we be more conservative? Are we concerned 
about what the, uh, the, the certificate of taxable value is going to look like this coming June, July, and, and in the next couple of years to follow. I know that there are special taxing districts and municipalities in this county that are concerned about what, what are they going to have the revenue to continue to provide services at the level that they have based on lost, demolished, damaged, or, or reduced value property? Um, currently, no, we don't have any concerns based on the information we've been receiving for that area. Okay. The, the other question I had is in, in the, uh, on page three of the presentation, mm -hmm. I'm seeing capital outlay, uh, like there's nothing listed under capital outlay, you know, moving forward. And my concern is, isn't that the line in which we would set aside monies, particularly I know we had previous discussions about, and I think we even earmarked by, by way of motion, a certain amount of money to be used as small parcels become available in the CRA, particularly in the, in, in the downtown area, in the district area, to buy those to use as additional parking expansion, even if we can only get 10 or 12 spots in one. 10 over here or 17 over here. Um, if we find those parcels, I think we had authorized the executive director previously as those things came up to make those deals and enter those contracts. There was a motion made to authorize. Where are those funds coming from if, if a parcel comes available right now? So currently you do have a project available for land acquisition that we are putting funds into that at the end of the year, if there's any cash available, we do move with your um, approval those funds into that project and then you do have the option with the 1.2 million dollars available to put funds into any additional projects moving forward including that land project but that are remain those remaining funds aren't shown as carry forward under capital improvement the next page so for so for example yes they are if you, if you look at the, the 1.28 million that we have we're looking to utilize a big, a big majority of that, almost a million, to do a capital project for the parking lot. So I guess the question is, how does that? I think if you go to this page right here yes. for uh, Mark Mason, Financial Services Director, you see the line item. It's I think number four, six down, uh, 006 property acquisition. Currently, you have 2.8 million dollars that's available. It's not budgeted on an annual basis. We actually set this budget, and you know, it's a life to life to date type project. I'm it's not captured on that particular document, but you have it available to you as a capital improvement. Okay, all right, so all right, that, that explains yeah. that. Um, the streetscape pod project, and I, you know, I certainly wasn't involved here when the original streetscape project was approved and funded. But really, the streetscape pro project on 47th stops at Coronado, yeah? Doesn't yeah. go beyond Coronado. Correct. My it goes from 15th to Coronado. Yeah. It doesn't go beyond that either. Would it be beneficial? Wouldn't it behoove us to continue <coughs> that fee all the way to Palm Tree? We've got businesses going in there. We've got a hotel there. We, I mean, Somebody, I wonder that every time I drive 47th, why it's like, it's like the tale of two worlds. When you cross <laughs> Coronado, 47th is a, is a different place than when I look at my rear view mirror and I'm wondering, there's, there's businesses investing down that way. Um, is, is that outside the parameters of that? Is that a project we could look at? Is that fit with, I mean, I'm not, is that something the city would like to see done? Is that something we can discuss later? So when we did this original streetscape project, it originally was discussed to go from Palm Tree all the way to Del Prado. There were um, some is some significant issues that arose on the Del Prado end um, due to eliminating business access and driveways. Um, as a result of that, it was going to lead into uh, what we had discussions with legal of basically condemning uh, business access and then it went into business damages and to accomplish the project, um, it was best left to, to come block back uh, one block or uh, one traffic light to the to the west. Similarly, on the west end, there were discussions about 
the residential neighbor neighborhood and characteristic of the north side of uh, 47th paired with the fact that the Hampton had already kind of set their image for the the brick pavers and and the cross section of the of the right of way so it was best the, the the board at that time thought it was similarly in the best interest to move back one traffic light from uh, palm tree back to um, coronado so that's kind of how the limits of the project were set it initially was set um, broader but because of the the characteristics of each of those bookends um, it was shrunk back a little bit the parcel that sits next to hampton at coronado is, do we know is, are there any development plans have that been submitted do we know if there are plans for development of that parcel or who owns it or i know we know the owner I, i'm unaware of any development plans that have been submitted yeah. a million years ago there were but then the crash happened mm -hmm. and that went by the board and then uh, i got one final question then i'll shut up <laughs> we, we had purchased two parcels over on the lafayette side that were turned into parking correct and then there was another one parcel over i don't know vincennes is it not vincennes yeah it was small are the, have those three parking lots been like finished are they surface line marked or, or where are we in those three projects? So one, let's go in reverse order. Okay. The latest one you purchased, which is on the south side of Cape Coral Parkway, um, is undergoing, I believe, design. Okay. Um, there was no money appropriated or budgeted to actually construct that. So in this budget, what we're putting forward, this, this is the last one. Oh. I'm, I'm going in reverse order. So the last one you just purchased south of um, Cape Coral Parkway um, had money set aside. The board authorized the acquisition. Uh, it's under design. But we're, what I'm proposing with the $1.28 million is to, to resurface Big John's parking lot and then also basically set aside the money to actually construct that additional parking. So bring, that to, bring it to life. Uh, the north side of Cape Coral Parkway on Vincennes, that has been designed and is in permitting, and we're awaiting the South Florida Water Management District, the st basically the stormwater permits uh, for the stormwater runoff. And the one on, on South, there were two parcels that were close together or something? One of them we did not get, correct, Dawn? Mm -hmm. One of them was sold to the private. Right, we got outbid. Right, we got outbid. Oh, okay. I thought we had secured all three. No, just just the one on the north side, right at the corner of Lafayette and Vincennes Street, right behind the 7-Eleven. Okay. All right, thank you all for talking. I, I just have a question while we're talking about those properties. There's, um, it used to be a, oh, what do you call that? It was a store that sold nautical things for boats and whatever. Mm. Now they sold that. Next to that building, there's a lot that they're doing all kinds of things to, and the owls were on the property adjacent to that. I haven't seen an owl. I don't know what happened to them, and what are they doing to that lot? Does anybody know? I don't know what's going on with that lot, but let me talk about the owls in the CRA, and in, in the south of there's like a veterans. lot of owls. A lot of them, <laughs> if they weren't out, unfortunately, you know, their homes were inundated just like ours. Wow. So we've seen a lot of owl nests in the south that no longer have visible occupant. Okay. Uh, that was just an aside. Sorry. <coughs> yes. Under operating, can you um, clarify the money for bike nights? Because I thought we were doing five thousand dollars each not six not twenty thousand dollars for three that was changed prior to with our former executive director we had that meeting when it was allocated that they would get twenty thousand a bike night okay. for the three bike nights i didn't remember that yeah it's um, to cover the cost of the bike night okay mm -hmm. and then um i know 
Mr. Brantley's talking about extending in Glendale Prado, and I was part of that when all the condemning the land and all that stuff. My concern is um, the hurricane, and maybe I'm not reading this right. What's this 2,948 hurricane in? I know that I think we got the lights back working on 47th, the overhead lights, but I know there was an issue with the landscaping and then Club Square. When will that landscaping be replaced? The security cameras, the Wi-Fi, is that covered under FEMA or is that something that we're going to have to pay for? I just want to make sure that what we've done for the streetscape project is up and running before we take on more stuff. Okay, so as far as landscaping is concerned, that will not be covered by FEMA. That is something that we'll end up having to replace. It's, our, it's on okay. our dime. Uh, we're looking at the, uh, the Wi-Fi or, or uh, you know, the, the lighting, et cetera, as part of a project, and some of that will likely be refunded back to us. Uh, but at the same time, we're still working through that. I, you know, FEMA takes, it's a marathon with FEMA. It's not a sprint. So I'd remind everybody of that. And uh, so we're actually working on getting that repaired down there. And I, <clears throat> I think we're doing something uh, with the lights to get the, changing the electric in them uh, to get them working again. Right. I, with overhead lights, I think, are working, right? Right. The security cameras. Yes, that's what we're working on. It's not powered up yet. So can we use some of the money for fixing the landscaping if we know that's not going to be covered on the existing streetscape project before we do some of the other stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't, know, I didn't know the landscaping was an issue. I mean, it is so. terrible. I said last time, the last meeting, that we really, I thought, needed to do a really good job because you see so much stuff on social media about people complaining that, you know, the beautiful white lights aren't up on the trees anymore, and they just don't understand how bad things really got down there. And um, I, I would like to see some of the money be utilized for that kind of stuff, if necessary, to get it back looking nicer. Okay. Are we certain what's alive down there and what is not alive after the storm before um, rainy season, or do we have to wait till it starts to rain a bunch to figure out what's usable and what's not going to come back, if there's anything that's died out now? Who wants to talk about landscaping? Anybody back here? <laughs> <laughs> Paul Bunyan. <laughs> Just say it. We, uh, our arborist, he went out there and he did a landscaping and he has some recommendations on replacing some of the, 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 the trees that were lost or damaged. So one option is to replace in kind with the same species. Uh, but he's also looking at suggestions. If you, if the CRA board decides to put more money into uh, the bucket for landscaping, he he would like to upsize and upgrade what we have. But it will be up to availability of funding. Can, can we get some options brought to us? Yeah, uh, if you want, we can we can schedule uh, a meeting or an item on the next agenda to kind of go over what was damaged, what was lost, and then alternatives. Okay, we'll do that. Can we have a question? Can we pull up the minutes? Is there a way to pull up the minutes from April 5th, 2022, about the bike night when we supposedly voted? Because that's kind of bothering me because I could have, I thought it was $20,000 for four bike nights at $5,000 each, not $25,000. Take a minute. It was 20 yeah. each, but it was up to 20. Because I, I had an issue with that myself, but 20 each. But that didn't mean they had to spend 20 or that they were getting just an even 20. If they spent 11, that's what we would give them. If they spent 10, that's what we would give them. Yeah, if you want, yeah, pull, pull up the minutes. I, I, think, I think the question you're having <coughs> is, is, is the CRA sponsoring bike night or is the CRA putting on bike night? I think it's the sponsor. And I understand uh, from the uh, previous executive directors in, w in 2021 was that it, in effect, the bike night is, the, is a CRA function and the city staff is the one that puts it on. Mm -hmm. And the cost of putting on bike night 
uh, is anywhere between $15,000 and $20,000. Mm -hmm. That's the cost to us to put on bike night. And so it's not, there's a difference between a sponsorship and actually being and, and you all putting on bike night. So that's, that's the difference between the two. If you were just simply going to sponsor it, and we went out and got a lot of other sponsors, and it was a city event, that's one thing. But I think what it was is that it's a CRA event, not a city event. And I think that's really what the approach here is. And so... I considered it, when I worked for Parks and Rec, retired in 2001, I always considered it more of a special event. I didn't think of it as a CRA event. Right, it, but it, I think that's what we were trying to uh, convey is that you know it is a CRA event, unless it moves somewhere else. You know, at this point in time, it really is an event that is is solely for and at the and a benefit to and a benefit of the CRA. Because I'm concerned that if 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 we're doing twenty thousand for that, then can other entities come to us and ask for more money? No, the, again, it, I, the, the distinction here is, is that you're not sponsoring, they're sponsoring events of people putting on events down in the CRA that they're coming to asking you for and you have a $5,000 cap for that. The city's not coming to you and asking you to put on bike night in the CRA. And in fact, CRA is putting on bike night and contracting with the city in order to actually do it. That's the difference between, you know, sponsoring something and actually owning something. And so from, a, from what we, how we've looked at this, at, at least since 2021, as I understand it, is that the owners of Bike Night are you, the CRA, and you're contracting with the city to manage it and put it on. And so you're paying us for that service. So Bruce Shiner is also a title sponsor for he that is. event, right? And how much money does he give for the bike night? And whatever that net amount is, that's what the you know it, that's what the, the the CRA is actually picking up. So we'll just say I don't know how much Bruce Shiner puts into it, but we'll just say he puts in five thousand dollars, and we get a thousand dollars from somebody else and a thousand dollars from somebody else from there. Cost us twenty five thousand dollars to put it on. Seventeen thousand dollars is is the cost actually is the net cost to have bike night down in the CRA. So I'm okay with that. However, I would like to see, and this goes back to the retreat when we were talking about if we're going to be like the head thing to get more out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like we're mentioned just a little bit to the side on the stage of bike night. And if they're giving five, 7,000, whatever you said, that's my concern because I want people to know more about the CRA. I want us to be marketed, I guess, I, I, I more. agree with you 100%. So that's, so that's why I'm yeah. asking that question. And I wasn't yes. aware of that hypothetical, of that differentiation. To me, if that's the case, what Janet had talked about earlier, I feel as strongly now about knowing that our name ought to be front and center. I, mean, I, I agree with you. I see us get sponsorship, but, but this CRA, slash this city needs to be getting the credit for putting on that event. It's a popular event. And, and our name, our stamp needs to be on it. We need to get some credit for that so that people know that this TIF funding is being captured and brought back here and, and worked through staff and this board year in and year out. It has benefits. Yeah, because to me, Bruce Shiner kind of gets top billing, and I understand why for years they've done it and the reason behind it. But if we're getting so much more financial aid, I just want the city and the CRA to get more billing. Or more billing. We agree with you. Well, and we will make sure that, it, it, well, we you know, working with, the, working with the executive director will make sure that that, that changes. <laughs> How's that sound? Writing that down? Sounds <laughs> mm. I just, I'm confused. He who writes the biggest check gets the most marketing. <laughs> As well as should be. What you want, you know. <laughs> as well it should be, and and so this twenty thousand dollars, it it it's an estimate, uh, and you know that we you know what what the cost is is the cost. We go out there, we make every effort to uh, obtain sponsorships uh, in order to you know decrease the overall cost of the CRA, and you know we certainly look forward to your help in getting those, those sponsorships as well. Well, that's why. That's why when we gave money for the Pride event recently, 
And to me, because I went to that event, we were in that event, and they took you know, they kept announcing it on stage, whatever, you know. I, I kind of liked that feeling that the CRA was being recognized for that $5,000 that we were helping them with. So when I see $20,000 an event and I see we're like this big compared to this, well, that, that was a concern of mine. I think we'll make sure that, you know, the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Cape Coral, spot, uh, you know, puts Presents. on bike night. You know, <laughs> presents presents bike night. Yeah, are we <laughs> allowed you. to do that? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I, and clearly, I think over the last several meetings, it, it has appeared that there has been a disconnect on this subject. So, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to explain it. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Can we go back to parking lots for a minute? I understand that um, the owner of two meatballs has purchased the property next to them, between them and Wendy's. It was supposed to be prime 239 at one time and then the hurricane happened and they moved. But he purchased that lot now and he wants to make that a parking lot. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to have a private public partnership and I think somebody needs to pursue that. <coughs> Wait a minute, so you're saying he bought the backyard beer garden used to be plus the vacant lot where 239 was gonna be? Uh-huh. Yeah, he's opening that restaurant, uh, what, what used to be the beer garden, that's gonna open as something. Right. Then he has the two meatballs and then the property next to, between. By the running shop. By the running shop between that and Wendy's, that lot. And what's he planning with that? A parking lot. Didn't know that. All right, so are we good with the budget? Uh, no. No? <laughs> uh, quick question, uh, city manager. Um, you spoke earlier of a firm to help with project management services. Is that for city as a whole, including the CRA, or just CRA? No, this is solely for the CRA. What, what, I'm, what I'm hoping to do here is to basically go out, identify a firm that can provide us with an individual who specializes in project management, um, not hire an employee of the CRA, so it wouldn't be in a... So then let me ask them the question then. And um, if you look at the overhead, um, I think it's up there, the second item, we have an administrative and a maintenance position, right? And technically your position as the executive director is on board. Notwithstanding the maintenance position that's relatively new, do you, that position hasn't been advertised or hired yet, has it? Which one? Um, the administrative position for the CRA. No, and I want to, because I wanted to out outline no and that's I why i'm see. asking Make the question because sure it sounds like you're trying that. to do something a little different which means not only with that position but one of the strengths i think of the cra and it goes back to just about a year and a half ago when i got on was i always thought it was pretty easy to see the projects but I, my first thought was wow who's ever doing this? this is a lot of work a lot of keep it on top of it so are you looking to possibly take some of the tasks that the administrative position used to do and then include those within that management firm? Yeah, so they'll work, they'll work hand in hand, right? So what, right, the person that used to manage all that work is, is he still over there, Rigo? Is he, is he still there to do? Yeah, he, he, he was the person who was managing a lot of these projects. However, like I said, with Ian, he, his workload has tripled, if not quadrupled. Um, so what I'm looking to do is bring someone in to basically handle all these projects that the CRA has. Mm -hmm. Parking lots, lights, landscaping, um, restriping, you know, signage, working with the maintenance person to identify the, the things that need to be taken care of. Eventually we're gonna get into, um, you know, dumpster enclosures and then possibly continue forward with additional. <coughs> so basically looking out, out down the line. The administrative person right now was basically setting up the agenda, you know, processing any payments, you know, opening any, per, you know, getting quotes, getting the, so this person will work hand in hand with that project manager to 
get the bids to procurement to get them out on the street to review uh, pay requisitions the project manager mm -hmm. would sure. and then submit them for payment but what so it really gonna, allows you they're going to work they're going to work hand in hand so it allows you to not only specialize it but do you think then from that standpoint I mean, it's always nice to have a staff component but the sad fact is especially in emergency situations sometimes people come and go so having the continuity of the services and that's what a firm can sometimes bring because a firm yeah maybe one point contact person but usually it's an entity of several different layers which is what i think we are getting in our uh, monthly reports anyways was a good continuity of you know here's how it's you know slowly but surely moving down the track so um i appreciate that i think that's a good start you know because at the end of the day the money is probably similar of what you're having to budget so then it becomes a question is are you getting the services that you need especially with the demanding board such as this um well and if, and if we have an issue with the services or if we have an issue with that project manager it's easier to say hey we have we need to take this position or this project in a different direction and then we just move on and then the last question kind of more food for thought in listening to everyone today talk about different areas, including the CRA as a whole, where there was a comment of this or that, or where what ended here and there, the you have three generations from the original square, then the bigger piece, and now that. One of the things I think we ought to do as a board is seriously just go back to planning 101 and go, all right, look at the core. When we're looking at design issues, if we're looking at functional issues, and I believe the city manager first comments out of the gate were CIP, your capital improvements and your infrastructure, because at the end of the day, all the stuff that's on top is nice, but it can't be put there and sustained if we don't have the infrastructure in place. So one of the things I would like to do at some point is look at a regulatory series of maps, because we do have land use maps, zoning maps, but we also have infrastructure maps that show us what we have, but also what we don't have. And I think long-term planning on some of those deficiencies to improving them, because we're gonna get the big sexy projects. You're gonna see some of them come along just because they do, but I'm as concerned with the infield projects because I think long-term that can have, I think, a positive impact. So with that, you know, at some point in our budget, we need to be looking at some basic planning. You know, especially when we have a budget that's five years out. Um, that's all I have, thank you. Parking. Can we go back one minute? Sure. The minutes from the April 5th, 2022 meeting. Take a look at what was made and approved for $20,000 for four lot grants at $5,000 a year. That's what the quarter was I don't have a copy of that, but I, I am validating that this board can only budget one year at a time. So whatever motion you made in 2020 would only be applicable for the 2020 budget. Then you have a 2021, 2022. Now we're, we're 22. I'm sorry. So whatever we want to do moving forward for 2020, if 2024 is budget, whatever we discussed today, should be on, on record for 2024. And then when we come back for 2025, we reevaluate if that worked, if we want it to be more flexible, if we want to reduce it, that's fine.
And that, that's what I would ask is that we, similar to the discussion about the building, regardless of what we had in the past, because it may or may not have worked, you know, we saw the issue with when you're too concise in your motions, then it requires us to come back and get approval again later. And when you're too broad, then sometimes we don't know what we're working with. It was, are we, are we in the right ballpark? So it's it's just finding what is that right mix moving moving into into 2024. Actually, this was it. This was it. Yes. <laughs> So we, what, I think what we've taken away from this gives us uh, the information we need to come back and have a final document in May for you to basically approve uh, for submittal with the overall budget to the city council. That's kind of like what we're looking for. Is there anything else that we want to add today? Or, I, it, you know, I think we have a good idea of what we're doing with the $1.2 million as well as any other things that we have out there today. In order to work, in other words, do things, infrastructure uh, improvements in the in the CRA, et cetera. Actually, a motion to uh, reallocate those funds for the Founders Park would be appropriate. So what, and, that, and that's important because my understanding is that there was a tabling of that project, taking it off the board, which there was money appropriated. So what I'm proposing here is that we, in order to resurface Big John's parking lot, I think it was about $320,000. So I'm saying let's utilize the money we had set aside, that capital outlay for founders that's not going to go there, plus an additional 50000 to have enough money to completely resurface, uh, mill, resurface, and then restripe that parking lot. Second. Biondi? Aye. Brantley? Aye. Gebhard? Aye. Time? Aye. Slaughter? Aye. Five eyes. Motion carried. Well, at least you know we, we, we look at the, the budget so we're not just killing trees. That's the good news. <laughs> I received a confidential proposal yesterday um, for that parking lot. Um, I had known it was coming, which is why I did not, um, I, re I directed the resurfacing and milling and resurfacing fund reappropriation of Founders Park to the other one. I don't, even if it happens within the next five years, I don't think it would be good use of our money to spend $300,000 for five years worth of, of asphalt. So there, we could look at possibly seal coating and doing uh, minor structural repairs wherever there's root damage, a lot less money knowing that eventually we may have something a lot larger coming. So um, I un
noted. We'll we'll look at options. I I believe we could probably go in there and and seal coat and do minor repairs to to any type of potholes, damages, do and and give it freshen it up a bit. I think I think it would be appropriate to go back to the building if now that you got you all understand my vision for where I'd like to take this the next couple of years with the project manager and all these pro you know getting back to um, if the grant program is successful there's going to be a lot of partnerships with the private sector building out parking lots and so you add all those you know five or ten parking lot projects that need to come on board and be reviewed and inspected um, moving the staff that was moved up here because of the consolidation of the CRA back to the CRA. Um, I think it would be appropriate if you could then now maybe recon reconsider the other item that you started off with on um, whether or not you want to sell it or, or retain it. Yeah, the, the chair was moving on to the next item. What I, what I think is appropriate now, having given us direction on this budget and knowing that that, was, that plan is part of how we would, I would like and I think now we are going to proceed, I think it is now an easier direction for the first item. <laughs> Good afternoon, Percy Zambrano, Interim Public Works uh, Director. A uh, good sad way to talk parking. So uh, we were tasked by the city manager's office to put together a scope and fee uh, regarding uh, a parking management study for the CRA. At the last, at the March meeting, you had somebody that came in uh, bringing that issue to the CRA for attention that there is the the the, the issue with the way the properties are subdivided in the CRA. There is not enough room for everything that needs to be accommodated there, and that is hindering the development and redevelopment of the CRA. So with that, I'm going to introduce Laura Dot. Laura is our principal transportation planner within the Public Works Department. She, she's been leading, uh, getting the scope put together and then she got uh, reach out to consultants and she has a fee. So she's gonna uh, bring her, um, the, her findings to you for discussion. Thank you. Good afternoon, Laura Dodd, Principal Transportation Planner for the record. Let's see if I can uh, push the right button here. All right, so what you have before you is the South Cape Downtown Parking Management Plan. So in short, the purpose for this study is to evaluate and regulate short, mid, and long-term solutions for parking management practices in South Cape Downtown. The need at this time is to provide a clear mode, roadmap rather, for some of the persisting uh, perceptions and challenges that Cape Coral is facing with parking. And that dovetails nicely into the regulating document that we can hang our hat on for the necessity for this study. And I'd like to quote some of the guiding visions within the redevelopment plan, such as adequate parking has been a consistent obstacle in reaching the CRA's vision, and that it comprises almost 53% of the land area. However, parking is still perceived to be insufficient. And then lastly, the character of the frontage parking, and some may perceive that, that it diminishes that overall character vision of the CRA. So what this project is proposing in a scope is to review some of the existing plans and policy and do an in-depth analysis in data such as the inventory turnover and parking ratios and that includes community engagement and stakeholder workshops, including an online component. 
And it'll deep dive into some issues analysis to strive to meet technology, sustainability, resiliency, and equity in its findings. It'll provide financial strategies, and then lastly, recommendations. Dovetailing also, it will uh, provide for deliverables, such as summarization of those data and the existing plans and policies, the summary of community input, and then it will look at some of the issues and prioritize those issues for recommendations, and some of those recommendations will provide financial strategies for implementation, but also the implications associated with them. With that, it will provide for a final recommendation. The proposed timeline for this project is approximately six months with an expenditure of $100,000 and intended to be led by the Transportation Planning Division. Is there anything that I can answer for you? Is there something you brought today? Uh, within the... It's within the... the Based on the uh, pricing we got, is within the purview of the city manager and the executive director's approval. But it's going to be a consultant. It's, it's not done in house. And, and you come in tomorrow. Correct. Will you just touch on where? where you are in the procurement process or the engagement process? Are you in month one, are you in month two, or have you not started yet? We haven't started. We're waiting for consensus. What we're seeking is, uh, if there is no objections, we're gonna proceed. Um, we're just seeking input from the CRA board at this time. Second to last. The very last slide. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I guess the question was, what, are we in month one right now? Or do you have <coughs> We haven't signed, uh, we haven't issued a purchase order. as soon as possible. Uh, keep in mind that we're doing the multi-model <coughs> transportation plan for the city at this time. That plan already started a month ago and it's gonna take a year. So we really, it is our desire that whatever the recommendation from this plan, this study, we can incorporate in the overall vision of the city. All, oh. we're looking at all, correct. That's number number four, uh, number three is the parking supply and demand. Yes. So with, 
what is what look at the different cadres of public parking private parking how many are north of the parkway how many are south of the parkway how many are east of vincennes how many are west of vincennes how many so it's basically an entire inventory analysis and then looking at the demand so if 50 percent of those spaces are daytime occupants maybe there's an opportunity to enter into a, arrangements with them that at nighttime they become public so you're looking at I'm sorry, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad we got all that on tape. <laughs> Are, have you been talking the whole time? <laughs> Are you looking for a motion to approve the 100,000? Yeah, so what, what we're just presenting, what, what we're looking at doing, uh, obviously there's a lot of opportunity here. There's, so we're looking at possibility of you know, quantifying the supply and identifying the demand. Uh, looking for payment in lieu of parking options, looking at eliminating parking requirements. Uh, this is kind of like a comprehensive approach here. We just wanted to make sure the board was okay with where we're headed. And then if you are, we're going to kick it off, and um, that's our plan of action. So shall we make just a motion that we are in agreement with this plan? And, and if you notice there, just before we before you that, that's, 6.1 uh, says that we're going to have a board and committee update in month three, four, five, and six. So the first couple of months are going to, it'll be quiet, but then we'll have one for every month, the last four months, so that we, you have the ability for um, input. Are we going to get like just a little update along, like the parking supply and demand study when you're done with that? Would you, yes, we would. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah right in the middle of it. Yeah. As, they, as the consultant makes progress, we will come to this board to share the findings and get feedback from the board. Somebody want to make um, since my microphone is now turned on, I'll make the <laughs> motion uh, that we, um, would it be approve or would it be support the proposed timeline and estimated cost as presented by the um, city manager and public works department? Is this one of those general ones, Brian, that you would like let, tightened let me, up? Let, let me, all right, I got my microphone on. Um, why don't we go with an approval because that covers support. When you go support, that doesn't cover approval. So you might just as well approve. The okay, I'll withdraw that and um, let me try again, that the CRA board approve the timeline and estimated costs as included in our packet of, well, March or was it April 4th? I'll second it. Sure. Biondi? Aye. Brantley? Aye. Kime? Aye. Slaughter? Aye. Four ayes. Motion carried. Okay. Moving on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item number nine, new business. Proposed changes to the CRA special event sponsorship guidelines and application. We have a uh, staff presentation. So Maureen made the changes that were requested at your last meeting, uh, representing the two times a year and the um, guideline for submittal um, that was discussed. So if you all agree with what was sum submitted, a motion to approve would be um, appreciated. I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Madam City Clerk, call the roll. 
can I verify who provided the second? Jim Brantley. Thank you. Biondi? Aye. Brantley? Aye. Time? Aye. Slaughter? Aye. Four ayes. Motion carried. Okay. I have a question. How will that get out to the public and the different groups that apply so that they know? I uh, will have Maureen send you all an email tomorrow with the messaging campaign for it. So it will go out to the different people that come here, like touch a truck and... It, it's going to have to go out to everybody that is out, out there. Everybody. Plus, we're going to have to have some type of flyer or pamphlet for those who are not out there yet, but yeah. intend on coming. I think you currently on your home page, you're on the web page that deals with it. So it's a lot of it just refacing, I think, some of the current applications as well. All right, we're good. Moving on, small business grants. Have uh, Sharon present this one. Just one second for the presentation. Good afternoon, Sharon Woodbury, Economic and Business Development Officer. So uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to present um, assistance that we're proposing for uh, small businesses. We are focused on the CRA area uh, for this purpose, but we recognize that there are some similar needs in the, um, in the greater area within the city as well. So if you look at the objective, um, we wanted to review the, um, the eligibility, eligibility and the funding guidelines for our existing programs um, and considering where there are gaps. And uh, we, we may be missing the mark in terms of assisting some of our businesses. And so um, with that, we wanted to meet the challenges of our, that, that are unique in downtown Cape and then also assist our businesses with extraneous costs uh, designed to enhance infrastructure and public improvements through our land development code. So here's the why. Um, we found that some of the provisions of the land development code, um, they trigger significant fees and they've become prohibitive to development. Uh, the unexpected costs can discourage businesses from making quality investments that create the atmosphere desired for the downtown Cape and our current infrastructure assistance program is geared towards targeted industries and larger scale investments. So one of our existing programs, the Building Infrastructure Grant, is focused on infrastructure. Um, but as I said, um, this particular program, um, the scale of it is um, a bit too large for some of our businesses. Um, and uh, we wanted to take a look at how we can um, accomplish the same purpose, but in a different way. So uh, the, the grant currently assists developers with site development costs that are associated with um, non-residential construction, expansions, or renovations. Um, and it's for target industries. So in this case, we were looking at marine related industries, distribution and warehousing. The minimum investment for this program is $500,000 and um, projects that are less than 1 million, uh, the funding available is not to exceed 50,000. Projects that are greater than 1 million, the assistance is not to exceed 250,000. So our solution um, is B2B, which is breaking barriers to business. With this program, we're looking to provide assistance towards expenses that our businesses are, are incurring as a result of permitting and land development requirements. Um, businesses that make a minimum of $25,000 uh, investment into their building and site improvements would be eligible for the program. Uh, businesses will receive a grant that's equal to 20% of the total project investment at the site. This would exclude the cost of equipment. The city would reimburse up to 50% of the required land improvement and development costs 
Um, that would apply to impact fees and permit fees, and it would not exceed $50,000. So examples of the expenses we're talking about may be um, requirements for expanded parking and uh, improvement of parking lots, sidewalks, landscaping, uh, right-of-way improvements that all fall under that, that public infrastructure. So it's not necessarily within the scope of what the business is proposing <coughs> to put forth, but these are kind of the um, collateral costs that come along with building in, um, in the Cape. The idea is to partner with these businesses and supporting them with these public improvements and providing the funding as a grant. So that gives us an overview of um, how the program would be structured, now opening it up for any questions. Go ahead. Sorry, on one of the pages, did you say, maybe it was the second page. I saw somewhere where you said downtown, oh yeah, downtown Cape. Should we change that to South Cape? It's called South Cape, not downtown Cape? Yes, okay. we can make that amendment, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's it. The funding source for these grants is what? Is it CRA money? This is the, so in the budget, oh, no, go ahead. in the budget, uh, in 2023, I think you all had like 336,000. Uh, I'm proposing in the FY24 budget to take that to 500,000, which would essentially be at the $50,000 grant level would it be essentially be 10, up to 10 grants. Um, and if, if there ends up being smaller, we could have more. Now, is this a, a program that the, the city separately will be funding for bit and making available at some level, funding level for businesses outside the CRA, elsewhere in the city? I believe if we are successful creating the vision here and turning all of these parking lots that have been dirt for 10 years into something beautiful in the next one to two years, that the city will be compelled to follow suit. Okay. Uh, what about, uh, this is not facade. We talked at one time about possibly launching a facade grant program to the CRA for some of the older buildings that <coughs> don't present well. Right. <coughs> this is not that. This is not that. Okay. Correct. This, this is, is strictly that. infrastructure mm -hmm. improvements to the land and the parking lots and that. Yes. This is related to the, the, re, the repetitive and continued existence of people trying to expand, business owners trying to expand down there, or owners trying to market their buildings for changes of use that become untenable because of the lack of parking or the lack of infrastructure. Um, and it's just, as, from, as you move from east to west throughout the entire South Cape, you, we know all the examples, we can list them all. And so the idea here is to try to uh, provide grants at a significant level of, of investment to, to put the money to eliminate the slum and blight in the South Cape. You need a motion to approve this? What, I think what needs to be done, because even though that is up there, this should, since it's not going to be an ordinance or anything by the city that is going to go into the economic development part of the code of ordinances, we should probably have it spelled out in a resolution, a CRA resolution. Therefore, we have it in a document, not just in a PowerPoint. And I know it was used in there, the word city, so that it's got to be the CRA since the city won't have anything to do with it. So I'm, I'm recommending that, no, we don't approve it right now. We come back at the next meeting and, and Sharon and, and our office will get together and, and, and so you'll have a resolution have for a resolution us at the meeting. For a CRA grant program B2B, whatever it's going to be called. Also, we're going to have to look at the CRA plan to make sure it actually allows for this type of grant. I know before we used to be specific. We were very specific with, with the facade grant and so on and so forth. Years, I shouldn't say years ago, a few years ago, four years ago, five years ago, uh, 
Terry Hall, we, we came back and, and actually revamped and revised the, uh, uh, the plan. Did make it kind of broader, but I don't know, at that time there was the grandiose kind of approach for the big projects. I'm not sure if it allows, if the plan allows for small grants. So we have to ensure that too. But right now, we need a re we'll, we'll need a resolution. And I just wanted to elaborate. So the, at the last meeting, I just kind of threw out a couple of sentences saying, here's what, we're, what I'd be looking to do. We said that we'd look to come back to give you an, an example of this. I don't intend on waiting till October 1st for the next year's 500. What I'd like to do is, this is the framework. Now we have a little bit, you have a little bit more detail than just me saying a couple sentences at the last meeting. If you're okay with it, then we'll move forward with it, create the grant program, make sure everything is a, approved, and then we'll start marketing this right away this year so that we can try and get some of this stuff done immediately as opposed to waiting till 10 more. I have a question on that. Like, uh, it's up to $50,000, half of the, there, you have all these mm -hmm. formulas. Yeah. Is there going to be an amount of money that we're going to be spending in a year? And once we get to that amount of money, if somebody needs something, we're going to say no, or is it just the budget is a guideline and we can amend it? So what, what typically happens with a grant <coughs> is that you have a, a notice of availability, uh, like a funding <coughs> availability, mm -hmm. a NOFA, they call like, it. Like, say we have $500,000 so th in there. This year, I think you all have 336. Mm -hmm. So once, let's say next, the next meeting we come back, you all have an approved resolution. We'll send out a notice of funding availability to everybody in South Cape saying, if you're sitting on the shelf with a project, We've got 336,000 up to 50,000 is eligible for you to, to get it done. Okay. And we'll take in those, those grants. If we only get four or five of them, we may be with a, within the 330. If not, then we have to look at who's the furthest along, who has design ready plans, who has a permit, who doesn't. So then we get the, and then we can tell the people that aren't that far along, you can go into the next funding cycle. Okay. Or we can come back to the board and say, Hey, there's four more out there. We need an extra, you know, hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. Do you want to move forward with an amendment to get that done, or do you just want to tell them to wait to the next cycle? Okay. So we kind of got to we kind of have, have to gauge the um, the response to this uh, after we implement it. Okay. So what do we do now? Where okay I would just like this? some general feedback from you all on. Um, if you think we're in the, in the right ballpark, mm -hmm. I'm still discussing with staff some parameters. So this isn't 100% of what's going to come back. But there's, because um, to me, I want to try to make it, um, I think if you recall, I discussed that it would include land acquisition as well as soft costs, uh, permitting and design. So some of the details aren't in here, but I just wanted to kind of lay some framework for you all to give me some feedback on are we in the right <coughs> zone does this kind of fit maybe a vision you had or you want to go add to it that's another reason for the resolution <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay I think yeah the only thing i'd like to add on that is i still have an interest in adding some smaller component i think i agree with you and i didn't understand it because the mayor spoke a couple months ago on this as well i don't know if you remember and I was wondering kind of at the time, you know, okay, what's he talking about? But as it got more and more, to me, it seemed like, okay, we're doing private, but really small area infrastructure improvements where beyond insightly, it's functionally not, well, it's, some of these lots are dangerous. They are not functional. So from a criteria, that seems to be a higher order than making it pretty. But for maybe say a 5,000 or some type of lower grant, Boy, some, you know, new paint can go a long ways as well. Okay. Yeah, I think we're all, are we all in agreement? I think we are all in agreement for you to move forward with this and come back with a resolution for us. Very well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Reports from staff. Um, if I might, I think you still have a three o'clock. What, what I would like to do is because you all tabled the, the first item on the Lafayette Street building until we had the discussion on the budget. Um, 
if you agree with where we're at, I would like for, if, if it, I don't know how long you want to keep that vision out there, but I would think it would be appropriate to have the unfinished business 9A, um, a motion to take that off the table for fiscal year 24. The building? Yeah. And we, and we, the CRA staff and the exact, we will use that for the purposes we discussed. In other words, are you asking under 8A? 8A. That we re-examine that to essentially give the direction of these um, long term years. Ba Sorry. Basic, um, basically, it would be bullet number three uh, and four, which is utilize building as CRA office and staff offices and continue to use it for CRA decorative items. So basically, it would be taking off the table for right now selling the building or leasing the building. You're going to clean that room? <laughs> we're going to have to. <laughs> well, I think what, what we do is we would just make a motion that, based on the city manager's comment, that on agenda item 8A, the 1231 Lafayette Street, that it be the CRA board's recommendation that we not include the first two alternatives to sell or lease, but rather the city will maintain ownership, but continue for the next year, investigate how we're using it, both in staff, support, I'm sorry, not support, but storage. I'll second that. Can we vote with just three of us here? Yeah, yeah. and, and the reason point. I'm saying that is because there may be uh, people that are interested, we're waiting to see, and if we don't give definitive, then, right. they, then they'll not, they won't know which way we're going. All right, if we wait one second, we can vote with all four of us. <laughs> you want to repeat your motion so Jim is... Sure. Um, Mr. Brantley, what we have is we are revisiting agenda item 8A under city manager who's recommended that we make it clear that the CRA board is not interested at this time in selling or leasing, but for the next year we maintain ownership and we continue to use and evaluate it. Okay. And Janice seconded that. So now, um, Madam City Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Biondi? Aye. Brantley? Aye. Time? Aye. Lauder? Aye. Four ayes. Motion carried. Thank okay. you. I only have one report um, that I would like to say. Um, the city is hosting a Earth Day clean up Cape Coral event and we are marketing everywhere we can to try and get businesses, organizations, um, churches, athletic clubs, um, individuals, uh, residents um, to assist the, the community in Hurricane Ian recovery on Earth Day. Um, we're asking everybody if they can provide um, two hours of service, two to four hours, it's from eight to 12, just walking your business, walking your neighborhood, walking a, a street, um, a park you use, any, anything within the city um, on Earth Day from eight to 12. Uh, we don't need all four hours, just a couple of hours of assistance. Um, so my report is to announce that and ask that, um, I think it's the 22nd. Give me one second. Yes, yeah, Saturday, April 22nd. So as an individual, as an organization, um, Whatever um, assistance you can get, that'd be great. And Kimberly, thank you for reminding me of this. Well, I thought it was good. Um, I do have one more <laughs> item, if you don't mind. Uh, the art studio here is to, um, to share and discuss some uh, photos on um, some of the issues that, or the project they're working on. I was supposed to introduce Thanks. them for Greg. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to do that? Or she's gonna do it herself? Whichever you prefer. Okay, so my notes from Greg were that I'm supposed to introduce Jessica, who is the new executive director of the art studio, and Sam is with her today. 
Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. So we wanted to share with you um, a little update on the concrete enclosure project. Um, our called artists opened in February and closed on April 2nd. So we just have like a little sneak peek. Next week you're gonna get the actual packets and stuff by email to actually take your vote and um, choose what you'd like to see. But uh, we wanted to, since we, since we got to see it, we wanted you guys to see some of the cooler ones that we thought came through. Um, so we just have a couple here. Some of these artists also are part of, participated in the um, electrical box beautification project also. So some of these artists you might have seen before. We had 21 Lee County artists um, apply and we have almost 100 pieces to sift through. So, wow. and actually 21 Lee County artists, which was our, our goal was Lee County only, but we actually had entries from the whole world, all across the world. So we had to narrow it down already a little bit for you. But so thank you guys. We just wanted to give you that quick sneak peek and it's nice to meet all of you. Thank you, welcome. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Okay, comments from the board. Tom, you got anything? No. Jim? Janice? I do. So back in January, I think was our last one, um, we used to get monthly updated projects for the CRA, which believe it or not, I did read to see what was going on, if we could continue that. Um, also, I had asked at the last meeting about the status, which I still feel very strongly about, about the CRA video that we were told was going to be done a long time ago. And I know I see stuff on uh, employees, members, council members, stuff like that, but I still have it. I know they were doing some stuff on businesses, but we wanted like an overview of the CRA. We were going to do something about that. Are you talking about like one of these like little three minute, two minute videos? Yeah, or? do you remember like years ago, Shannon did one for Nevermind. Yeah. That was awesome. Something like that. About something like that. Live, have fun, eat, whatever. Yep. Um, and then I know we talked about, I had shown at the retreat a picture, some art of like the trash cans. Maybe that's another project that once we're done with the garbage walls, other than that, I think that's it. Thank okay. you. Um, I would just like to say that I would like to thank Fran and Steve Marcino for a wonderful Touch a Truck event that happened this past Saturday. There had to be 5,000 kids on Lafayette Street with all the trucks and the cars and the big pieces of equipment. It's a wonderful event and it brings awareness to Fragile X, and that's a gene that um, is primarily in autistic children. So it's a great cause. They raised a bunch of money, but more than that, they gave our city a wonderful event for kids, and it didn't cost any parent anything to go there. You know, it's no, no charge. So that was, that was a great event. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Easter, Passover, and our next meeting is May 2nd, I think. Real quick, I do want to comment positively on the Pride event. Oh, the Pride event was so fun. It was fantastic, <laughs> it was well attended. Um, just, it, was, it was nice being able to participate in the parade and. I think everybody associated with that did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree. Our next meeting is Tuesday, May 2nd, 3 p.m. in Council Chambers. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Aye.